Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to today's discussion video where I'm going to be giving my personal opinion after rereading the entire Kawaki arc and Code arc on who I think is going to be written off here. There are some obvious characters, but I really doubt it stops at one or two. Now, of course, before we get into these characters, we first should discuss how exactly this arc is going to end and who the true villain really is. There are a few points we need to come across, but the first one I want to discuss is Boruto and his scar and how exactly that heavily relates to this video. So if we look at Boruto chapter 69 with Sasuke stating that, you know, it is now his turn to show his resolve, which if you didn't really understand what he meant by that, well, I think it's fairly obvious to say at this point that Boruto, Kawaki, Sasuke, and Naruto, when it comes to the serious climax moments, are kind of the big four, or at least some of them are involved. In the Momoshiki arc, it was Naruto, Sasuke, and Boruto. In the Kawaki arc, all four of them were present against Ishiki, even if not all at the same time. And funny enough, Sasuke kind of acknowledged that he was the one getting hold in that Kawaki arc and didn't really do much because everyone in that big four besides him has had their moment to show their resolve. With Naruto, it was Baryon mode, showing how far he's willing to go for the village. With Kawaki, it was killing Boruto, proving that he's willing to do anything for Naruto. And for Boruto, it happened like twice. It was him willing to stab himself in the neck against Ishiki and accepting death for the sake of not going on a killing spree against everyone he loves. But Sasuke is the only one who hasn't had that moment yet which is what he meant. However, if we look at Boruto ending 4 with the Leaf's destruction, or ending 14 with Boruto looking at Sasuke then crying afterwards, and most importantly, both Ikimoto and Kodachi stating that the story was eventually going to be dark, it's really hard to deny the fact that Boruto is most likely going to be the one to kill Sasuke unintentionally. Now coming back to the point about the scar, I may or may not have made a video on this or talked about it once, but I think the scar given to Boruto is by Sasuke just for the simple fact that Sasuke being the one to give Boruto told that Scar would act as a reminder of what he's done forever, which fits the dark theme they are going for. He will never not be reminded of what he's done, which also could back up Momoshiki's words in this recent chapter of how Boruto will lose the will to live. It doesn't matter if he's looking at a mirror or if people he comes across keep asking him how he got it. The torment will never end. Now, there are two questions we can think about if hypothetically it is Sasuke that gives him the Scar. The first one is who else is fighting with Sasuke? Because as amazing as that would be to have 100% Boruto versus Sasuke, it just becomes way too obvious at this point in the story that Sasuke would lose. The second question we could ask is, are we looking at another Kawaki arc situation to where all the focus is on the danger in front of them, which is Code and his army, and once that's dealt with, my theory of a model comes in and it turns into Boruto being controlled via pills, forcing him and maybe others to fight the old gen cast along with, you know, maybe Sarada, Mitsuki, and some other people. It would make it seem like Code is the final threat to this arc, when in reality, this was the Amato arc, and Code was just a distraction. If we do get a team up against 100% Boruto, I don't know if Kawaki would be involved because honestly, I think a team of Kawaki, Delta, Naruto, and Sasuke can definitely beat 100% Boruto. But we also have to factor in how tired everyone could be after this code fight and some may wonder why I'm drawing out this mini war we're about to have like Konoha will win for sure. And the only reason I'm doing that is because narratively, if Amato doesn't make it to Konoha until after Cole's rampage, when does he plan on explaining Ada, Damon, and his true plan to the leaf. Is he supposed to wait two years until after Konoha rebuilds themselves? Why would he wait for that when he can just tell them right after the fight? But at the same time, if Code is forced to retreat because of some reason, yet Konoha is completely destroyed, then where is Ada supposed to stay? Where are they supposed to have this conversation? Are they gonna have it in the middle of all the rubble and destruction? And if a model makes it beforehand, well, Code is just screwed because he 100% cannot win simply due to Damon being there. So the only thing I'm thinking is that Code will barge into Konoha, do some damage, maybe kill off someone who I will get into next, then is forced to leave, the village isn't in that bad of a shape to where, you know, there's nothing left standing, Amado appears and explains Ada and Damon as well as telling them why he needs Kawaki's karma. I theorize that Amado will use some kind of method similar to Boruto's revival, but with Kawaki in order to bring his daughter back, which will end up taking Kawaki's life, which also forces Naruto's hand because his new model as Hokage is that everyone is his family, but he clearly cannot control Kawaki as he is way too reckless and could hurt someone else Naruto loves if it means Naruto's safety. Amato will propose a way that he thinks both he and Naruto could benefit with Kawaki's sacrifice. Naruto will decline, which forces Amato's hand because like he told Kawaki, he is willing to do anything for the sake of his goals. And this is when Boruto and everyone else Amato had a hand in becomes controlled, setting off a fight which is how we get Sasuke and others versus Amato's controlled beings. And honestly, one of the many possibilities is this may force Naruto's hand to give up Kawaki after Sasuke's 
death due to him not wanting more casualties. Who knows? Now to follow through with what I said about Code killing someone off, I don't think it's directly going to be through him, but I think he is going to play a part in the death of someone, and I think that is going to be Shikamaru Nara. Now, like I said, I don't think Code is going to directly kill him, but I think he's going to put Shikamaru in that position to die. I think the one who is going to actually deliver that blow is Kawaki. Now, I'm believing this, yes, because Code clearly foreshadowed Shikamaru's possible death, so it would seem like Shikamaru's death should be through him. However, I believe that they have been setting up this bitter relationship between Kawaki and Shikamaru for a reason. From the jump, Shikamaru never trusted Kawaki and even in this code arc was instigating Naruto against him regardless of doing the right thing. Kawaki as well in this arc not only bites back at Shikamaru but also tells Naruto that he does not care for what happens to him in chapter 66. I think that Shikamaru is going to possibly be in a similar position to chapter 65 when being held hostage by Code, except Kawaki unlike Naruto will go through Shikamaru in order to complete the objective. It doesn't have to go exactly that way but I think Kawaki will have a hand in Shikamaru's death for sure and Naruto won't be able to handle it this time which starts his resentment towards Kawaki. The build up of this bitter relationship between Kawaki and Shikamaru, you know, Shikamaru out of all the people being the one to question Naruto's feelings towards Kawaki and once Kawaki kills Shikamaru, you know, the one that was testing Naruto's feelings with no remorse, that may be what sets Naruto off against him and finally comes full circle. And honestly, now if you add my theory of Amato afterwards and what he has planned for Kawaki, this sets everything up well. Amato gets exactly what he wanted out of the whole situation, he needed Kawaki to be a problem to the Leaf and with him killing not only Boruto but Shikamaru, it will push Naruto to resent him which leads to Amato's possible plan having a chance of succeeding. Now with the obvious out of the way, there are still possibilities of other characters getting written off because yeah, I get how Boruto would be saddened by taking Sasuke's life alone but for it to be so bad that it puts him at a corner of complete depression? I don't know about that. Yeah, Boruto looks up to Sasuke but they don't have that same kind of relationship that Naruto and Jiraiya had. Or even Naruto and Kawaki, it's not close. I think Boruto's biggest fear of taking the lives of many people is what's going to set him off to most likely run away from the village. And that everyone is my ideas and guesses for who I think is going to die in this code arc. If you think someone else will die in this code arc for whatever reason, be sure to let me know why in the comments down below. Thank you everyone, if you like this video, I'd very much appreciate a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one.